black thing go from left to right, and I thought, I'm going to die out here. No one's ever going to know. And I couldn't believe what my eyeballs were showing me. I'll, I'll never forget how evil the eyes were. It was horrible. I mean, I've never seen nothing that evil. It ran towards me at a, at a rate that I, I I can't even explain. Turned and stared at me, and this look of I just want to kill you. I want to say it was human, but it wasn't. He was he was he was yelling at me to grab a gun, grab a gun. I was like, for what? He said, just grab a gun. And there's footprints all the way to the door of my house. It had went inside my garage, all the way to the door. 911, what are you reporting? Jesus Christ, you better... Sir? Gio. Hello? Get somebody out here. What's going on now, sir? That son of a bitch is about six foot nine, I don't know. Do you see him now, sir? Yes, I'm looking right at him. Uh Uh-oh. You're listening to Sasquatch Chronicles. Check us out online at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you've had an encounter, email me. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you tonight. Going to be bringing Tony on. And what's interesting about Tony's encounter, I get a lot of phone calls like this from people, and they generally don't want to come on the air because they haven't seen what's causing all this weirdness around their property, all these strange activity going on around their property. They actually haven't seen the creature, so they're always kind of leery on on coming on the air. The interesting part is usually I get a phone call six months after that first initial call, and they'll say, my wife saw it, or my daughter saw it, or I saw it. I know what it is now. But if you listen to Tony and what's going on around this property, pay close attention to the details on the different things he talks about. And I think you guys will start to see a little bit of a theme from past guests. Uh, And I know for the longest time, Tony wasn't convinced it was Sasquatch. He just thought someone was screwing with him on his property. I know he did have a sighting, uh, and he'll, he'll talk about that, but... Uh, and it wasn't at his home. It was actually, he was traveling. He he saw the creature cross the road, he, what he thought was a monkey crossing a road. Uh, and he'll talk about that. One of the things, as Tony and I were talking, he was discussing how he, he had heard the Trent vocalizations on YouTube. And I'll play it for you here in a moment. But he said, you know, Wes, I've been hearing that my whole life around my property. And I, I just never knew what it was. Actually, here's a small clip of the Trent vocalization, and I'll post it to the blog, the full thing. But take a listen. And I know the audio quality isn't the best, but it was actually taken off someone's porch. That's why you kind of hear rain in the background. Uh, The person who was actually shooting it was on their porch looking up the hill, capturing the sound. Kind of sounds a lot like the Ohio howl, doesn't it? Here's the Ohio howl. And I'll post both of those to the blog. I know when I was talking to Tony, he brought up the Trent vocalizations a couple times. And I really wanted you guys to be informed and and know what what he was talking about with the Trent vocalizations. But it does. It sounds a lot like the Ohio Howl. And, you know, Tony was telling me, hey, I've I've heard that so many times. He goes, I can't tell you. And I just, I never knew what it was. Uh, Very interesting stuff. Remember, if you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. And if you get a chance, check out the website, sasquatchchronicles.com. Again, I'll post both of those audio files up on the blog so you guys can hear the whole thing. You can also become a member 
and help support the show. In there, too, is a store. If you guys want to buy a, a gift for a family member or a friend or a loved one, or even for yourself, there's lots of uh, items in the store up at SasquatchChronicles.com. So I hope you get a chance to check it out. Let's jump into it tonight. Tony, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here tonight. Thanks for having me, Wes. And if you would, would you kind of start from the beginning and talk about, I know there was two separate incidents that's going on, one at your first home and then one at a second home. And in between these two incidences, you actually had a, a roadside crossing. Uh, but for the audience, will you kind of start from the beginning and talk about what was going on in that first home? And then we'll just kind of move through the timeline. Yeah. Um, at the first home, um, I guess it started out, uh, I kept hearing what, like, trees were falling or something, or just, it's like somebody had picked up a big log or a big rock and was slamming it on the ground. That's what I kept hearing. And this went on for, like, I think it was over a two-week period, but it wasn't every night or every day. And uh, finally, the last time I heard it, uh, I got a big spotlight and I had a gun, I walked over to the edge of the yard and was just shining the light up on the hillside. And when I shot, was shining the light up, it sounded like a bulldozer started coming down the mountain. And I kind of froze, just like, uh-oh, you know, here we go. I was expecting to see a bear or something come running out. But it's like it stopped right at the wood line. And, I mean, I didn't see anything, didn't see any eye shot or anything like that, and it just stopped. I stood there for a few minutes and decided just to go on in the house. And uh, like a couple of weeks later, I walked back outside. Just as soon as I stepped on the porch, I heard like footsteps, like somebody was running. And like instantly the hair stood up on the back of my neck because, I mean, it sounded heavy, like really heavy footsteps. And uh, again, I had a flashlight because... One thing at that place, deer were there every day. I mean, you'd see six to ten or more deer a day. And you could just sit there on the porch and shine light up in the woods and see the eye shine from the deer pretty much every night. But anyway, a week after I heard that, I was at a friend's house, and uh, my girlfriend called and said that she heard it too. She heard somebody running behind the house. I was like, okay. Uh, so when I got home, I thought well, maybe it was somebody. You know, maybe somebody's just messing around at the house. So I put, I, I wear, uh, at the time I worked at a water plant and I had these big metatarsal work boots. They were pretty heavy. And like I said, I mean, I'm a pretty big guy. I'm 6'5", about 320 pounds. And I ran through the yard and you could barely hear me. So who or whatever this was running had to have quite a few hundred pounds on me. What did you think was going on at this point? Did you think someone was just screwing with you on your property? Honestly, I really didn't know. Uh, I could kind of, that's what I thought because um, we lived right beside the landlord at this place and uh, some people had broke into a house down below us like a few months before that. So I just thought maybe it was somebody wanting to break into the place. And I actually asked the landlord if they had had any problems with anybody snooping around or anything weird happening around that time. And she said, well, actually, uh, her husband had went outside to lock up his building or something and got growled at. Uh, and he said it was, well, he didn't know what it was. He said it wasn't a bear that growled. It said it was a growl that he had never heard before in his life. He just he didn't know what it was. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot more really happened there other than, like, what my daughter said she saw. Uh, uh, she said that uh, she was outside playing and saw a deer run through the woods, and then right behind it, she said she couldn't see its face. She just saw, like, I guess the side of its head or the back of its head, but mostly from the shoulder down. But said it was just this big, hairy thing walking along like it was following the deer said its legs were huge said uh its arm or its hair was probably like five six inches long all over its body it was like a she kind of said it was a cinnamon brown color 
so she just watched it, you know, walk behind the deer or follow along behind the deer and then just disappeared. That's like she was probably about five years old when she saw that. And at first I thought she was just kind of, you know, making things up. Because, I mean, I've always had an interest in stuff like that. You know, growing up I'd watch In Search of Unsolved Mysteries and all that. And she liked that stuff too. But the thing is, her story has never changed. I mean, it, she tells the same thing every time she tells it. That's pretty interesting details, though, for a child to make up. You know, the length of the hair, the color, uh, you, you know what I mean? Usually. Yeah, that's kind of what got me. Because, I mean, at first I said, are you sure it wasn't a bear you saw? And she was like, no. She said it was walking on two legs. And then when she said the cinnamon brown color, I was like, what? okay. Because, I mean, I, I think I've actually heard people described that color before with Sasquatch. I mean, I, yeah, I would and, say black and cinnamon are probably the most common, kind of the reddish color. Yeah, I really didn't know what to think, you know. I, I was just, like I said, I always thought that was a West Coast thing and didn't think they would be here. I definitely get that a lot. And so you, did anything else happen on this property? There, no, not really. Not that I can remember. Uh, it wasn't long after that we moved to where I'm at now. And so but, uh, the interesting part is when you guys moved from one place to another, you actually had a sighting heading to your new place or going to your new place, didn't you? Well, it wasn't going to the place. Uh, I had went to Michigan to uh, pick up a truck cab. Uh, I was going to try to build this truck, but... I went through Kentucky to get there, and uh, part of the way you go is on the mountain parkway. And uh, on our way back, we were on the mountain parkway, and I think we're actually close to Prestonsburg. Uh, like I said, uh, I've been driving a while, so I mean, I was pretty tired, and it was really foggy. So at first, I kind of didn't really think nothing about it, but it looked like a monkey ran across the road on all fours and it wasn't huge it was like the, the top of the head was probably three or four inches taller than the guardrail because it kind of ran at an angle and went down behind the guardrail because the, the guardrail stopped and at this point and that's where it went behind it at uh i just kind of like what in the world was that but it was weird because it, it looked like it kind of blended in with the fog. I mean, like almost camouflaged. I don't know. It was weird. And I guess that's, again, that's why I kind of thought maybe I was just seeing things. And But then again, why would I see a monkey? If, it just didn't make sense. Yeah, and I can understand your the way you felt when you saw it. You know, why would there be a monkey out there in Kentucky? When you say it blended in with the fog, what do you mean by that? It was almost like it was part of the fog, I guess. Like it whatever color it was, it was, I mean, I really don't even know how to explain it, man. It just, I mean, it was like it almost, like a chameleon or something, just kind of blended in with the fog as it was running. Do you remember what color it was? Maybe a grayish color, like a grayish to a white, maybe. Because I mean, like I said, it was just, because at first I thought maybe just the fog kind of was blowing or something. I mean, I really didn't know, man. I mean, I, I know it's hard to, it's kind of hard to explain how it looked, but no, I think that actually makes sense when you describe it that way. You know, if you see a white grayish creature running through fog, uh, I could see how you would look at it and think it was blending in. Tell us about the, this house that you moved into the place where you're at now. Uh, what type of things are you experiencing? How did it start? And, and what type of things are you experiencing there at the property? Well, <clears throat> We uh, we moved here. It was August of 2014. Um, I think we were here about a month, and it was about 10, 30, 11 o'clock one night. Uh, I was outside on the porch, and I heard, like, somebody or something was trying to sound like an owl. I mean, it was extremely loud. And at first, in my head, I pictured maybe a woman and a little kid, maybe trying to make owl sounds. But then I was like, no, man, that was, that was just way too loud to be a person. And I really don't think it was an owl, because if that was an owl, that's got to be the biggest owl in the world, because it was just so loud. 
then after that, like I would be outside, I hear rocks clanging together over the hill, and to hear like like somebody was beating on trees or something, and uh, you, every now and then you could hear like movement over the hill, but I mean I couldn't tell if it was somebody walking or anything like that, but you would just hear like movement. I had told uh, my girlfriend about the owl thing that I heard. You know, she just kind of looked at me like, okay, that's weird. And uh, like a couple months after that, I heard the owl again. I said, my cousin was here with me this time. But this time it sounded more like a monkey, like like if a monkey was trying to imitate an owl. That's what it sounded like. The next probably would be around Christmas that same year. Uh, we had been to her mom's house and come home. We got home about 11 o'clock that night. We got the kids come in. I was the last person in. And she had went into the bathroom. And pretty much just a few seconds later, come running back out and said, Tony, somebody's trying to break into the house, into the bathroom window. I was like, what? She said, somebody's trying to break into the window. And uh, I was like, okay. So I got a flashlight and got my gun. Went outside, didn't see anything, didn't hear anything, there's nobody. But, I mean, it, I did have this just real weird, creepy feeling, though, like, you know, I was being watched or, I mean, like somebody was around, you know. And uh, I come back in, and I was like, there's nobody out there. And uh, she asked if we should call the cops, and I was like, no, nah, I mean, I didn't see anybody, there's nobody out there. And then I asked, I said, what did you see? Did you see something or did you just hear it? And she said when she walked through the bathroom door, she heard like something or somebody was kind of scraping or clawing on the screen that's in the window. So she cut the light off and pulled back the curtain and said she was there like face to face with somebody. So it looked like they had a hood on, but they blocked most of the window. Like she could just see a little bit through the window on each side. It was just she just saw a gray figure or not grace, I'm sorry. A black figure that looked like it had a hood on. And the next day during daylight, I was like, Well, where was he standing? And uh I went and stood right in front of the window. Now, like I said, I'm six foot five and the bottom of the window was right about my chin, the bottom of my chin. And she said, No, he was a lot taller than that. And I said, well, tell me when to stop. And I raised my hand up, and she told me to stop. And I measured it, and it was seven and a half foot. And she's like, well, what's there that somebody could stand on? I'm like, nothing. There's nothing here for anybody to stand on. She's like, okay, well, that's crazy. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't know. What were you thinking I didn't at this see point? Anything. Honestly, I was like, well, I tried, I tried to think. Cause like, could there be somebody around here that's that tall? And I was like, no, there's not. And I was like, and again, I don't know, man. I didn't know what to think. And uh, it was like a little while after that, I heard an encounter on your show, actually, that somebody had said that they thought some guy was walking around with a hoodie on in the middle of the summer or something like that. And I was like, man, there's no way. I mean, it's just, like, I couldn't wrap my head around it. Like, I mean, could these things really be here? Yeah, it's interesting. When people see that uh, at night, they'll think it has a hoodie on. They'll think someone is wearing a black sweatshirt with a hoodie on. And during the day, when you, those type of encounters, people will say it had a cone-shaped head. And so at night, you almost wonder, because it's so dark, when people see the cone-shaped head, they automatically assume, you know, there's no neck. And if you think of a guy with a sweatshirt with, you know, a hoodie, you never really see the person's neck because of the way it's shaped. And that's interesting. God, that's interesting. I almost, I feel bad for your girlfriend uh, seeing that. Was she not able to get any details? I would imagine a dark window, you know, dark room. Probably. No, just uh, what little light there was outside. I mean, she said it just looked solid black. Seven and a half feet up too. You know, that's. That's pretty big. And then you would think you would hear it running off. It doesn't shock me if it's these creatures that you didn't hear it running off. It probably went off into an area and probably was watching you the whole time you stepped outside. 
Um, Let's see. I thought of that because there's. I mean, honestly, there's plenty of places up here that they somebody could hide easily, and I'd never see them. And when was the next incident that happened at this home? Well, after that, like uh, they're in between. I guess in between that and whatever happened next, uh, like you know, I'd wake up at night, and what woke me up, I'd hear a loud bang, like somebody was smacking the house or something, and. I mean, I'd stay awake for about 30 minutes and never would hear it again. But more than once, I've been, I've got woke up hearing that. And even with her, like, I don't know how many times I would leave the house or I would be gone and she would call and say, man, Tony, somebody's, somebody's beating on the house. And I'm like, what do you mean they're beating on the house? She said, it sounds like somebody's walking around smacking the house. And uh, af- actually, after the uh, bathroom incident, I put security cameras up, and uh, there was one night that uh, I just went to the store, like about 30 minutes away or whatever, and she called and asked if I was on my way home because somebody was smacking the house again, and she went and looked at the cameras, couldn't see anything, and you know, when I got here, I went, walked around the house, I, I mean, I didn't see any prints anywhere, I didn't, nothing, I didn't see anything, I even went and bought gang cameras and put those up and it just seemed like wherever I'd put the cameras up stuff would happen on the other side or like every time I was like whoever was doing this knew exactly where I put the cameras even when I hit them they knew and I remember one time I had the cameras kind of scattered out and nothing happened for like two months and then I took the cameras to check them and as stuff started happening, like smacking on the house again. And, um, I've got a, like a little access door to go under the house. It's been open twice. Um, another time, uh, it was like five o'clock in the morning. Uh, she thought somebody was trying to come in another window in one of our other rooms. And, uh, she tried to wake me up, but couldn't get me awake. But she said she was afraid to, scream too loud I guess she didn't want whoever it was to know that she was trying to wake me up or whatever I don't I I guess she was just really scared but she said that uh, she sat there for a few minutes listening and it sounded like they were just kind of pecking on the window or messing with the window in that room and then she rolled over to you know try to wake me up again and uh, said she looked out the the front door, it's got a big window on it with a curtain on it. And she saw a big black arm go down in front of the window and said she just kind of froze. Didn't She couldn't really speak or nothing. And I guess she just fell asleep after that. And uh, But before she told me about this, I had woke up that morning and walked out the door and there was a big pile of grass or weeds, long weeds right in front of the door. And I was like, okay, that's weird. And I walked on down the steps and went around between the garage and the house and just happened to look over, and there's two handprints, like muddy handprints on the side of the house. And I said, I saw this stuff before she even told me about what she had heard. And, you know, I kind of looked at the handprints and I was like, well, <laughs> what is this, you know? I mean, it just, this is weird. And uh, I come in. I told her, I was like, well, there's there's handprints on the side of the house. And she's like, where? And I told her where. And then that's when she told me what had happened the night before, because the handprints were actually at the window of that room that she thought they were trying to break into. How big were the handprints compared to your hands? Uh, like, uh, like the width of the fingers was just a little bit bigger than mine, but the length of the actual print was quite a bit bigger or longer than mine. It was, from what I measured, it was, I think, like eight, nine inches or something like that. I I can't really remember. It was a long time ago when I measured it. Did you uh, see any uh, footprints or anything around those handprints, or did you look for, uh, at this point, I would assume that you're still thinking it's a person. Did you try and look for boot tracks or anything like that around where you saw these handprints? no. Well, where the handprints were and where I'd walked through, like, even if they were there, I'd have, I ruined them as I turned the corner. 
because like I stopped and turned. I was like, "What the hell?" And like where I was standing would have probably been where whoever it was was standing. So I, I didn't even, but really I didn't even think to look for that. You captured a growl on audio. What, what were you out doing when you when you got this growl? <clears throat> well, uh, like I said, once I started looking into everything and. You know, I thought, hell, I just put. Actually, I was wanting to try to catch that the owl sound. I, that's what I was trying to do. So before I went to bed one night, I just opened the kitchen window and kind of set the recorder in between the the screen and kitchen window and shut it. And that that's how I caught the growl. And what did you think when you heard the growl? <laughs> uh, I was just like, what in the world is that? And, I mean, I, again, I didn't really know what to think. I mean, I didn't, like, I guess part of me was saying, maybe it is Sasquatch. But then again, you know, where I hadn't really ever seen it, I'm like, but no, that that can't be what it is. It's, there's there's got to be something else. It's, it just can't be that. Yeah, it's interesting, people, in these situations. I guess it depends on your belief system, but uh, some people will think their house is haunted or there's some, you know, someone's trying to break in or... Uh, and some people will lean towards Sasquatch in these different situations. Uh, but it's just interesting. I know your girlfriend had mentioned uh, of them getting up on the roof. Uh, do you mind talking about that? Yeah. Um, well, our kids had went to uh, stay at, I think, my mom's or her mom's. I can't remember which one. And uh, you know, we were just sitting there watching TV, and I'd fallen asleep. Well, she woke me up. Like she was actually sitting beside of me, so she just like reached over and grabbed me. I was like, Tony, wake up, something's on the roof. And I was like, what? And she's like, something's on the roof. And I was like, yeah, it's probably just the cats. Because I know some of our cats, they started like sleeping up there. And I mean, I'd seen them come off the roof. And uh, she's like, no, I don't think it was a cat. She said, it's just too big to be a cat. And she's, uh, I said, no, it's the cats. I've, I've seen them jump up there. But, like, still, to this day, she's like, says that it was too big to be a cat. And so now I wish I'd actually went out and looked. But I didn't, so. Yeah, has there been anything else strange that's gone on around that property? Yeah, uh, my little boy, you know, he has little toy cars, and, uh, I made, or we had a little, uh, when we moved here, there was a, like a little footstool that had a lid that opened up where you could put stuff in it. Well, I just put some uh, sand down in that, and he'll sit out on the porch and play cars in that little sand. Well, one night uh, before I went to bed, I was coming in the house, and I had a hoodie laying on that little uh, footstool. I grabbed the hoodie off and went on in the house. Well, the next morning when I come out, I noticed one of his uh, toy trucks was on the steps. And I, and I knew it was inside his little sandbox thing. I'm like, how in the world did that get out? And I turned around and looked. And the lid to that box was open a little bit. Like, whoever opened it, when they went to shut it, it got hung up on another toy or something. But it was open about an inch. And so I just got the truck, put it back in there and closed it. And it actually happened again the next night. Uh, well, the next morning I come out, another one of his toys were laying, laying out on the, on the steps again. Um, I found what looks like footprints behind our barn. Um, I found trees that are broke over, uh, I had sticks piled up, like this little trail that goes down to the pond, went down through there, and like on the side of the pond, somebody had piled sticks up that wasn't there like the day before. Uh, found uh, like a little teepee structure, I guess that's what it's called, down over the hill. Uh, it's big enough that uh, I could actually probably get down on my knees and be straight up on my knees in it and fit in it. But I think I sent you a picture of that, too. Yeah, that's definitely strange stuff going on, and it sounds very much like you have Sasquatch on the property. It's like you and I were talking the other night. This is how it begins. This is always how it begins on these properties. Uh, and a lot of times people struggle with it because they actually haven't seen what's causing 
the issues. Uh, and then usually, I was telling you last night, usually six months later, all of the same people call me and go, I've seen it. I saw it. Or my wife saw it. Uh, we know what it is now. But, you know, there's so many things going on this property. And everything you're describing, uh, I'm sure you've heard on the show before, uh, of witnesses who, even off the air, I hear this from people all the time that have these things on their property, you describe the same thing. They think someone's breaking in. They think someone, though, I had one guy who, um, he constantly had his front door, the door handle, shake. And it would wake him up. He ended up sleeping out in the living room because he thought someone was, you know, trying to break in in the middle of the night. So he'd sleep out on his couch uh, with a gun. And he said around two, three o'clock in the morning, something would either hit the house or walk over and start shaking his door handle, and just terrified this guy. I mean, I would imagine it would terrify me too. You know, someone harassing you like that, or something harassing you like that on a on a nightly basis. Uh, I'd definitely keep an eye on those kids too, man. Keep an eye on those kids. Oh, yeah. Well, I do. Uh, I don't usually let them out of my sight if, when they go outside. And uh, See, we've got a German Shepherd here, too. And uh, actually, the first night we brought it here, uh, again, like I said, see, Sarah had worked third shift for a while, so she is used to staying up late. But she came and woke me up and said, something's trying to get the dog. And I was like, well, what is it? She was like, I don't know, but it sounds mean whatever it is but she said it was just this like deep growl that was uh she heard and then heard the dog like whimpering and crying and i I had him locked up in a like we have a little field behind our house that's fenced in and that's what i put him in and somehow he managed to get out of it and when i went out the front door he was there on the steps going crazy like i mean just I mean, he was only a pup then, but I mean, he was, you could tell whatever it was scared him to death because he, 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 like he had a nervous breakdown or something. I don't know. He was going crazy. But like, even now, uh, sometimes I'll walk the property and there's been a few times like before, most of the time, if I start walking around behind the house, he usually beats me behind the house. And there's been a couple of times, like I would start walking and I would look and he's nowhere near and I turn around and look and he's just sitting there watching me like, he's like, no, I ain't going. And I'm like, come on, trying to get him to come to me, but he won't. He he just, and like I said, most of the time he beats me out there because he's just a a friendly dog, loves to play. But there has been a few times where he just wants nothing to do with wherever I'm going, you know, and, uh, Sometimes like he'll he'll be laying there asleep, his ears will perk up, he looks over towards the edge of the hill and he'll go like the opposite direction, around behind the house, the opposite way and it's gone. I'm like, well that's just weird. Yeah, I know on the Christmas show, uh Ron Moorhead and I were talking about dogs and how dogs can alert you to these things. And with your dog, I, I don't know that'd keep him outside in that in that kennel anymore. Uh because these things uh, if they're messing with that dog, they're I've heard too many stories of dogs disappearing that were sitting out in kennels and the homeowners thought they were safe because, you know, it's got a huge fence around it and they wake up the next morning and their dogs are gone or they've had their right. heads ripped off. Well, I don't keep him in there anymore. I just pretty much let him run around. You know, he kind of has free reign wherever he wants to go. Yeah. Have you thought about setting up a full security system around the whole home cameras in every direction? Uh, and, and see what if you can capture anything, or if anything else, it might deter them from coming up to the home anymore. Well, I've got, like I said, I've got the there's a couple game cameras, and then I do have a, a security camera system. But uh, it, it originally had four cameras, but two of them quit, and for some reason they quit recording, and I just haven't been able to get another one. But like I said, it, it just seems like even with these cameras, who or whatever it is avoids them or knows where they're at and just stays away from them for the most part. Yeah, and that's another common thing you find with Sasquatch. I haven't been able to figure out yet. They seem to know and avoid cameras like there's no tomorrow. How often do is this activity going on? Is it year-round? Is it nightly? Is it certain times of the year? Have you noticed a, a certain pattern to when you get the activity picks up? Well, at first, when we first moved here, it was all the time. Like, it didn't didn't matter. It was just all the time for probably about a year. 
and then it kind of slacked off. And now it seems to be like around fall. Most of it's around fall and winter, and sometimes in the spring is when most of it seems to go on now. But yeah, like I said there at first, it was all the time. Have you talked to the landlord or a neighbor? I realize you're out in the country, but have you talked to the landlord or the neighbor and said, "Hey, have you guys have you guys ever seen anything strange out here, or is, or is there uh, have you guys ever experienced anything odd out here?" Uh, actually, yeah, I have. Uh, one neighbor that we've got, I actually got to be pretty good friends with him, and I asked him, you know, if he's had anything weird going on or seen anything, or and he said that. Uh, more than once, he's got woke up at night. Uh, he lives in a little trailer that's on behind our house here. And said it sounds like somebody's going down the side of the trailer tapping their fingers, just going like all the way down the trailer. Like they'll go down one side and then come back up the other doing that. And he said that's happened quite a bit. Actually, his dad lives back there like uh, in a house on around the road here. It, the road actually dead ends at his dad's house. And uh, he's got those, uh, I guess, the miniature horses or whatever. Well, he had said that he was going to give give us one for uh, let our kids have one because uh, they love animals. Well, uh, this was about a month or so ago. I was talking to him, and uh, he apologized. And I know I told you I'd give you one. He said, but something killed him. Uh, he had two baby ones that uh, within days of them being born, something had killed them. He thought it was a dog, but he, he don't know for sure. And, and whatever it was, didn't eat them. It just, just killed them. Did he describe how the, how it killed them? No, he didn't really say. Yeah. And I, also, I, just, I didn't think to ask. Yeah, I'm kind of curious on, on how they they wound up dead. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, it, it sounds like you're in ground zero as far as activity goes. And, you know, it's beyond setting up cameras and, and or lights. You know, lights are cheaper. Uh, and sometimes yeah. they work, sometimes they don't. Have you considered lighting the place up? Well, I've done that too. I've got motion sensor lights. Uh, I put them out behind the house and to the side of the house. I mean, it's been a while since we've had anything like actually hit the house. Um but most recent thing would be uh, my tr- our trampoline was moved, which I thought, my, uh, no, no, that wouldn't be it. Uh, well, I'll tell you about the trampoline. It was moved, like, back nine feet and to the left seven feet. And I, was, I don't know what happened there, but I didn't see any prints around there either because I looked. You you hear that behavior with people who have these around their property. It's like I was telling you last night. Uh, there's a guy I know here in Washington State, and he describes uh, his furniture, patio furniture, and stuff he has in his yard is constantly moved around. Nothing's ever missing. He said nothing's ever taken. It's just moved around. Like someone gets bored with the arrangement and comes in the middle yeah. of the night and rearranges things. It's strange, isn't it? Yeah. Let's see. Um, actually, a couple of weeks ago, I forgot all about this. Um, uh, you know, this the house we live in was uh, was her aunt's house, and she had passed away and left it to her. So you know, it's, we moved here. Well, they had a um, like a clothesline off to the side of the house, and it was just set up with aluminum poles. Well, my little girl was playing around on it, and I guess one pole was really weak or something, and like she was leaning or swinging on it, and it just or not really swinging on it, she just kind of grabbed onto it and it it broke so uh as a temporary fix, I just run the clothesline through uh the little drain coming down from the gutter of the house and right where the drain was bolted to the side of the house, and uh just did it that way and I guess when I I'd have to duck when I went under it because uh, the clothesline was right about at my nose when I'd stand beside of it. Well, a couple of weeks ago, uh, nobody was here, and I just come home from work. And when I got out of the vehicle, I just for some reason I just was drawn over to that way. I just looked over, 
and there was something laying in the yard, and I was like, you know, what's that? So I walked over and looked, and it was the gutter. Like, I don't know if, like, I thought maybe somebody was, whoever it is, snooping around. I come home and almost caught them, and they took off running and maybe ran into the clothesline and jerked the gutter off. I mean, they it bent the gutter up at the house, like, and the little drain thing that goes all the way down the side of the house, it bent it up, too. And, just, I mean, it just jerked it off. But I didn't see any footprints or anything there, either. But, I, I mean, I don't know, man. <laughs> it just don't make sense, you know? I think that you, it sounds like you definitely have these creatures on your property, Tony. I mean, it, it's... You know what I mean? It's it, what else is? What else could it be? You know what I mean? Is it people yeah, messing with you? No, I mean, uh, and I say it a million times because she's one of my favorite people I've ever spoken to. But the lady down in Texas, three black guys on her property constantly harass this woman year round. They bang on her house, <laughs> they throw rocks at her house, and come up to the windows. And but in her mind, it's three black guys. That's the only thing it could be. It couldn't be anything else because Bigfoot doesn't exist. And so it must be these guys. And, you know, as you start kind of putting things together, you start realizing really quick that, like you said, nothing makes sense. Um, how how, yeah. how are you feeling about this whole thing? I mean, to be honest about it, I would love to see one, but not here, not at my house. You know, I, I really don't want them here. I mean, but what can you do, you know? Yeah, I wanted to ask you, when you leave, uh, does activity seem to pick up? around that property or is it, it doesn't matter if you're there or not. Well, like I said, at first, um, like the slapping on the house, none of that really, there, there might've been once or twice. I heard it and uh, maybe a couple times at night when I was asleep, but for the most part, it was when I would leave. That's when it would happen. Cause I know that she, Sarah's heard it a lot more than I have the slapping on the house. And that's another thing, too, with these things. You you hear that a lot. Usually when the guy leaves, the, the female or the uh, wife or girlfriend, uh, they're the ones that generally experience it. And in strange situations like this, too, the other thing, too, is a lot of times kids see them before. I realize your kids aren't you know, old enough to be out running around by themselves for the most part, but usually kids are the first one that see it, you know, like your daughter at the at the last place. She saw it. Yeah. Uh, and that's usually how it goes for whatever reason. Usually kids see it first, and then usually the wife of the house sees it. There's a lady uh, in Oklahoma that I know of where this is almost what you're describing is exactly what's been going on at this house, except for when the guy's there, her husband, I think he's a truck driver. I'll have to go back and ask her. But when he is there, almost nothing happens. They don't really hear anything. Nothing really hits a home. And the moment he leaves, it goes on. And she's been, you know, and her husband thinks she's crazy. Uh, but she's like, I'm telling you, this weird things are going on. Something's getting on the roof. Something's banging on the house. I swear someone's trying to break in. But when my husband's there, yeah. it doesn't happen. Strange, wow. strange behavior. Well, that's like uh, where our kitchen, you know, we walk, you can go from the living room right into the kitchen and there's a door. You know, you can close the kitchen door. Like at night, my daughter will not sit there. Like sometimes she'll just sit down at the table and play or something. But if that kitchen door is open, uh, she won't. Like she goes and shuts the kitchen door because there's a window. Like you can stand in the doorway and look right out a window. And it's like that with her bedroom. If her blinds are open in her bedroom, she will not go in her bedroom at night. Well, even the bathroom, because I put blinds on the bathroom after that. And if she goes, like if it's dark outside and she goes to the bathroom, she'll come and get one of us to go pull the blinds down. I mean, she will not go into a room when it's dark outside if the blinds are open. Because she said she feels like she's being watched sometimes. That's interesting. Have you, have you sat her down? I know it's kind of a touchy subject because you don't want to freak your kids out. But have you sat your, your daughter down and asked her if she had seen anything out that window or why she feels that way? Yeah, I've, I've asked her. I mean, I mean, she's, she, I mean, for her age, like she's real, I guess, mature for her age, and she really understands things. So, I mean, I can talk to her about stuff like that. And but she says she hasn't seen anything here yet. Just that she just has weird feelings sometimes, like somebody's watching her, and 
Oh, well, actually that you mentioned that, um, uh, I forgot all about this. Uh, one day, uh, her mom, her mom was at work and it was just me and the kids here. And, uh, uh, I was in the living room, and my little daughter came running out of her bedroom. I was like, Daddy, was you just outside tapping on my window? I was like, no. Why? She's like, well, somebody's tapping on the window. And again, I went outside, didn't see nothing. <laughs> and, I mean, I don't know. But so after that, I put one of my cameras till it points right by her bedroom window, and nothing's happened since then. Um, yeah, that would enrage uh, me, knowing these things are tapping on my kid's window. Yeah. It's interesting. It, it does kind of piss me off, you know? It's like, I mean, if it's somebody just messing with me, I mean, I just, I, I want to catch them, because it, it, it's aggravating, you know? It's <laughs> yeah, and you see how the guys from the uh, Siege of Anabia lost it and started, I know they took a lot of heat for uh, shooting one of these things, but... This is how it started out on their property. I mean, this is exactly how things started out. It just started ramping up more and more and more, and these things got more and more ballsy. And it's interesting. I think it was the guys from the siege that were telling me uh, when they would grab their gun and run, he'd run out of his room, run all the way around the home to the front door, and he could hear this thing already taking off and going to the backside of the house almost like it knew exactly what he was doing where he, and he was, you know, loaded to the hill with a gun, but he would run all the way around to the front door, open it up. By that time, the creature had already taken off. And so it's strange, strange things going on there. That's for sure. You'll have to keep me up to date on, on what's going on out there. I definitely will. Uh, But that kind of reminds me of another thing that happened. uh, Their dog we've got, you know, like, you throw a rock for him, he'll be your best friend forever. I mean, uh, he just loves rocks. Like, he'll sit there. I've tried to give him, like, dog bones so he wouldn't destroy his teeth with the rocks, but he won't have nothing to do with the dog bone and just sit there and chew rock. But anyway, it was me and the kids were outside playing. It, this was actually just this past summer. It was probably about 7.30 at night. I mean, it was still daylight out. And I heard a rock go flying through the trees. And I guess my dog thought I threw it, so he took off after it. And I was like, what in the world? And, I mean, he just went over the hill, and then, like, less than a minute later, come right back up. I mean, I went up and looked, didn't see anything over there, but, I mean, I just, I don't know where the rock come from. <laughs> and that's a little disturbing when you hear a rock come. Was a rock being thrown at you, or did you just hear it coming in your general direction? Well, I, I just heard it going through the trees, like, hitting the leaves, like, you know. I mean, I didn't see or hear where it landed or where it was coming from. I could just hear it going through the trees. Have you heard any vocalizations around that property? Have you heard any whoops or screams or, you know, I know you got the growl, but was there, have you heard any chatter? Has there been any other vocalizations that you've heard? Well, <clears throat> I have heard, like, um, I think I told you in the email about the Trent vocalizations. That's what really got me really looking into this because when I heard, found that video on YouTube and and actually the Ohio house sounds a lot like it too. I mean, I heard that my whole life and just did not know what it was. And I've heard that once here and I've heard, uh, one morning, uh, I heard a bunch of crows going off and then they stopped and then one single crow kept going, but at the end of it, it sounded more like a chimpanzee than a crow. And I was like, okay, that was just weird. And um, actually, a couple weeks ago, I put my audio recorder out again, and at the beginning of it, you can hear, uh sounds like somebody's talking, but you can't understand what they're saying, like, I mean, it's almost like they're not really even speaking English. I mean, I don't know. It's weird. I mean, but it, it don't sound like a real deep voice, though. It's just, I don't know. I'll have to I'll try to send that to you, too, see if, what you think. But uh, that's about it that I can think of that I've heard. They always mess up when they do the copies or they're doing mimics of things. And I've heard that when I was in Texas, where you would hear what you'd swear was an owl, except for at the end it breaks off and sounds like a chimpanzee almost sounds like another animal that was just mimicking an owl. 
and it has kind of a yeah. weird monkey sound to, towards the end of it. And I've heard that with coyotes yeah, that, too. I've heard coyotes go off when I was down there. And towards the end, it, I, I could have sworn it was coyotes, but at the very end, it sounds like a monkey doing a coyote call. I mean, it just was odd. It was really strange. Yeah. Yeah. That's like I said, the owl sounds that I heard, like that's, that's what it was. I mean, it honestly sounded like a monkey was trying to be an owl. And I know a lot of people that like, no, that's just the barred owl. That's how they really sound. And I'm like, no, I, I've heard them here. <laughs> this was something completely different. This was not an owl. It was just way too, there's too much lung power behind it for it to be an owl. Yeah. And that's, that's what I thought too. When I was in Texas, when you hear the owls, I was like, ah, it, sounds, it still sounds like an owl, but it sounds too big to be an owl. I mean, it sounds like a 800 pound yeah. owl. And then at the end, you hear the monkey noises, and it really throws you off when you hear that. Uh, has there been anything else that's been happening around there that you can think of? One night, uh, my cousin was up here, and uh, we decided to walk down towards the pond <clears throat> and look around. And uh, this, like I said, it was probably like, I don't know, maybe 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. I really don't remember. And uh, as we, we got down there... Uh, it was like I just, I just dead stopped. It's like I couldn't walk any farther. I couldn't. I just the hair stood up on the back of my neck. I had the chill bumps, and just the feeling I got was, man, we need to get the hell out of here, like now. I turned around, was going to say something to him, and he had this, this scared look on his face, and he was shining his light, looking around too. I was like, man, you feel that? He looked, like, yeah. Let's just get out of here, <laughs> and. uh as we were kind of backing up to get out, that's when we saw uh, like a rib cage laying in the ground on up in front of us. And turned out it was the uh, ribs of a deer. And the more I got to looking around, there was you could find its legs. It was like a few feet away. Actually, I found three legs, and they were all probably five, six feet away from the the, the rib cage. And I found the skull laying, like, buried under leaves under at the bottom of a, a pine tree. Like, I saw the antler sticking up. That's how I saw it, which I knew because I'd just been down there, like, the day before during the daylight, and that deer, the, the parts wasn't there. Like, a week later, I went back down there, and there was a... the skin from the deer still attached to the head, but the rest of the bones were gone in the same spot like the other deer parts that we'd found the week before were gone and this was laying there and i'm like what i mean that just didn't make sense to me either it, where did this come from i mean i i don't know this is weird man yeah i'd be careful out there yeah, what is your what does your cousin think he's kind of like me with it i mean he's he's i mean me and him we've always been close even when we were little uh, and like I said, you know, when we were little, we used to pretend we were out looking for Bigfoot, but in all honesty, we didn't think they were here. I mean, we didn't even really know if they really existed. And, but now like, you know, he's, he's been with me through some of this stuff. And I mean, he's kind of on the same page as me, I guess. Uh, cause I know we'd went to, I think I told you about this, uh, a place called Birch Knob. They have a big tower where you can like see into Kentucky and everything, and like you can go camping down there. They have little cabins throughout the trails that they've got, and uh, we were walking along the trail and come to where uh, I guess back in the 1800s, this moonshiner lived, and you know it's got a little sign up talking about the guy that lived there and the sheriff shot him or something like that, but. Uh, off to the side where the house used to be, like you can just walk to the edge of the hill and it's like a big overlook. And we're just standing there looking around and right from where we had just came, we heard like a wood knock. And, you know, we kind of looked at each other and looked back and, you know, just looked around trying to see something, but we couldn't see anything. So we kept walking. And by this time, it's completely dark. And the trail goes and then it's like starts going up straight up the mountain well we stopped before we started going up the mountain to rest and we hear this huge thump like kind of like what i'd heard at the first property just this big massive 
funk. It was to the left of us. And we walked a few, maybe about 50 more feet and stopped again. And this time to the right of us, uh, I'm assuming, I guess it was a growl. Because, you know, like at first I was like, what is that? And after we heard it, he looked at me and said, man, was that a growl? And I was like, I, I, I guess so. But it, it was like, almost sounded like thunder, I guess. You know, I mean, I really don't know how to explain it either. Because it sounded weird, but then it had like a gargle at the end of it. Like somebody was, like an animal growling. But it was the deepest growl I've ever heard, you know. So we we decided to leave after that. And on our way out, we could hear, like, twigs breaking above us every now and then, all like, all the way out to the car. And I said, I haven't been back up there since then. Yeah, I don't blame you. I know the growl you're talking about, or if it's anything like what I heard. Uh, you're right. It's very hard to explain. It's It's very deep. It's very gurgly. You know, I described it as a demonic growl. I mean, just something, it sounds like a demon growling, you know, whatever a demon sounds yeah. like, but uh, that's, a, you know, the worst thing imaginable, growling at you. That's that's terrifying. I know there was a time where uh, you were talking about hearing someone, it sounded like they had a baseball bat, were smacking every tree on their way up a hill. Oh, yeah. Um, the uh, audio clip I sent you, like, on the a couple hours after that on my recorder, you can hear it sounds like somebody's over the hill with a ball back just banging on trees. Like they hit like three or four times right in a row. There's this uh, a store just like two minutes from my house. Actually, like right now, <clears throat> this time of the year, I can see the lights from the store from my house. Well, this guy that worked there, I got to be pretty good friends with him. He used to be a county cop here. One day I just thought, hell, I'll ask him if he's ever had any strange calls when he was a cop and he's like, yeah, actually, yeah. He said that, uh, uh, this woman was up at that birch knob tower and apparently, uh, she was in her car or something. And, and the Bigfoot came and smacked the side of her window while she was in it. And, you know, she just put it in gear and got out of Dodge after, uh, I heard the audio that I was just talking about the tree knocked or whatever. He was telling me that uh, there's a guy that lives kind of across from me, like on the next ridge over, which, like I said, at this time of the year, you could probably see his house. Uh, said he had went out like 2 o'clock in the morning, was going to, uh, yeah, I guess, pee over the porch or something. I don't know. But anyway, when he walked outside, he said it sounded like somebody was going crazy with a ball bat beating on trees yeah and that's something you hear often from witnesses where that tree knocking and i don't know if it's uh wood on wood or if it's actually rock on wood i mean i've talked to many witnesses where uh some people will say they had a big stick in their hand or and i've talked to other witnesses that say they had a big rock in their hand and even people who've heard that hunters i've talked to said no i think someone was taking a huge rock and hitting a tree with it and it was just that pow just that loud bang sound uh, and he goes, I, I don't yeah. think it was wood, but uh, it it sounds like, like I said before, it sounds like you're in ground zero. I'd just be careful uh, around that property. Keep an eye on your kids. If you can, set up those cameras all the way around the house. Try and catch it. I wanted to ask you, is the activity mainly at night after the cover of darkness, or has there been anything that's happened really during the day uh, around the house, I mean? Yeah, pretty much the majority of it is at night. But uh, there has been some t times during the day when I've heard, you know, like I can hear the rocks clanging together. Or um, well, one day uh, I had the kids, they were playing on the trampoline, and I was just walking around out in the field there. And all of a sudden, it was like the most horrible smell I'd ever smelled. It was like, it smelled like a skunk, but worse. I mean, I, I don't know really how to explain that either. And, uh, you know, I just kind of looked around trying to see anything, didn't see a skunk anywhere and which it didn't last, but just, I mean, maybe a couple minutes and then the smell was gone. And, uh, I've been in the garage here and had the door open and you smell this for like a few seconds. You smell like dead meat or something. That's all. Uh, that's, that's really about it that I can think of. 
Yeah, and that's not far off. You know, as you listen to witnesses on the show, they talk about that. Some witnesses will experience that that smell. And everyone kind of has a different way of describing it, but I think the way you're describing it really is how most people describe it. Kind of a rotten, like a skunk times a thousand, and it lingers yeah. in the air and then it goes away. Yeah, that's that's what this was. <clears throat> this other thing happened. This was uh, actually early, well, it was about, I don't know, eight or nine o'clock one morning. Uh, I mean, I don't know if this has anything to do with the Sasquatch or what. I mean, it, it was just weird to me. Um I went to that store and come back. And when I got out of the car, I could hear a deer over the hill. And it sounded like it was dying. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, like, as it was screaming, like, after the third or fourth scream, I could hear it, like, gargle. And I was like, man, something's got a hold of the deer. And I just had on, like, uh, I think it was, like, flip-flops and shorts. So I ran in the house. Uh, put pants on, got my boots, got my shotgun, and was going down to see what I could find. Because honestly, I thought my dog had might have got a hold of one because he likes to chase deer too. But I mean, he just never caught them. And uh, so as I'm going down the hill, uh, I hear something moving around, and actually, I see my dog down there. I'm like, well, he's killed a deer. So I get down there, and. Uh, He's just trying to pick up a rock. There's like a rock about 10 or 15 feet away from the deer, and that's what he's doing. He's trying to get that rock. The deer's laying there, and it's like its head is, it's like the deer, like say the deer was standing up, and it just lifted its head straight up and back, like looking behind itself. And I got to looking around, and you can see like, uh, where it looks like the deer was jumped because all the grass is pushed down in this big circle and you can tell that there was like a fight went on there and then you see drag marks and they're you know going towards where the deer is at now and there's a tree that had fallen over it was actually held up off the ground maybe maybe about two feet well there was blood all over the tree and on this side like where i was standing the big puddle of blood on the other side of the tree there and then it drug on down to where the deer was laying. But I, I couldn't find any places on the deer and I thought, well, maybe my dog had got it. Well, the German, it's a German shepherd and he's solid white. And I guess my way of thinking is if he had killed this deer and as much blood is laying right here, he'd have blood all over him, but he didn't have a single drop of blood on him anywhere. So, I mean, I don't know what happened there. Was the deer's neck broke? Is that what you're describing when you say it was turned all the way around? I mean, I don't know if it was, like, it wasn't, I mean, I don't really know how to explain that either. It was like, it was like it was, uh, like you, ah, man, I'm sorry. I'm trying to think the best way to. No, that's all right. It was like he, the deer maybe had looked, like if it was standing up, like say the deer was alive, he stood straight up. Just like his head just went straight back, not turned, but just lifted and oh, pointing back behind it. I got you. Yeah, and, and so when you're looking, did it look like a possible cougar attack? I think a cougar would have st- stayed there after its kill. Usually after they kill something, well, they don't leave. Well, see, that was the thing. I couldn't see where the blood was coming from. But, you know, I mean, I didn't flip the deer over to see the other side, but it's like the blood kind of stopped a few feet before the deer. So it was like blood on the tree, a big puddle on the ground, and then it kind of smeared a little bit, but then there was nothing, no blood. And the deer was probably, I don't know, 10, 12 feet away from the tree and probably, I guess, 8 feet from where the blood stopped. But, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it could have been nothing. I mean, it could have been something else. I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to say, but with the activity you're describing around the home and the activity you're describing around that property, uh, I'd be venture to guess that, you know, most likely one of these creatures killed that deer because they'll do that. They'll ambush those deers like that. And, you know, if it would have been a cougar, like I said, cougars don't, they don't leave after they've killed something. They'll stick around or drag it off. They generally don't leave. And, and that's about the only thing out there that would kill a cougar, isn't it? You're in Virginia? Yeah. Well, we have 
I think black bear, but that's the black bear, the cougar, and coyotes. That's that's about it. Yeah, and those you know, a bear's not going to go after a deer, but coyotes they would have still hung around the area. I doubt they would even have. It'd have been easier for the coyotes to go after your dog than a, a deer. Uh, they probably would have taken their chances. That's, that's that's kind of what I thought too. You know, and like I said, at first I thought it was the dog, but. I mean, it was a pretty good sized deer, and and again, there was no blood on him, and as much blood as there was on that tree and right below it, he would have blood all over him. And like I said, he's solid white, so you would have seen it. Did you end up taking the deer, or did you go back and see if the deer was still there the next day? No, I didn't go back. I just I don't blame left you. it alone. Yeah, I don't blame you. And uh, actually, this one another thing. This uh, the store I was talking about. This woman that used to work there told me one day uh well i was there one night and uh the owner was there and he was taking trash down to the trash bin and uh she told him to be careful in case the bear was out there and uh i was like oh you had a been seeing the bear up here and she's like yeah she said the weirdest thing she said it grabbed a uh milk jug out of there the other night and walked off like a person did or would and i was like wait what do you mean she said it grabbed the milk jug with its hand, with its paw, and walked off on two legs into the woods. I was like, a bear did that? She said, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think when you heard that? I, I, I was thinking that probably wasn't a bear, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, you know, most people try and put things into context, you know, as far as what, what actually makes sense for them. <laughs> And, you know, I've talked to uh, many hunters uh, where they'll describe a bear running at full sprint on two legs like a man. It always cracks me up. You know, I'd probably give the lady at the the store a little bit more uh, leeway on it. But when I talk to a hunter and they tell me they've seen a a bear, you know, full sprint, two legs running like a man, uh, I have to kind of laugh a little bit because they know better than that. And I'm sure this lady right. knew better than that. Bears, you know, they don't grab things with their claws and pick it up like a milk jug and walk off with it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because I would say, I said, so it grabbed it with both hands and walked off. She's like, no, it just grabbed it with one, grabbed it like you or I would, and then walked off on two legs into the woods. I was like, okay. <laughs> and is this the same sure. store that you uh, that you you can see the lights from your home? Yeah. Yep, same store. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Sounds like they're all over the place in there in that area. Is there a ridge line nearby, by chance? Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, like I said, I'm up on top of the mountain. Like, I mean, honestly, like you cannot go up any higher, really, from where I'm at. I mean, you can see other ridges, like like you know, I can stand out in the yard and see the next ridge over, which a couple of them are a little bit taller or bigger than where I'm at. But I'm pretty much on top of the mountain. Well, stay safe out there, Tony. Let me know if anything else happens out there. And I really appreciate you coming on on the show and talking about this. I talked to so many people via the phone that never make it on the air that experience the same type of stuff. Uh, and, and a lot of people don't want to come on because they're like, I haven't seen it. I don't know what's causing it. It could be people. Well, I mean, I'll be good. Well, honestly, that was my first thought. I was like, man, I don't need to be on the show. I haven't seen anything. I mean, you know I mean, what? What what good would I, you know? The stuff you're experiencing, a lot of people experience them. And usually this is how it begins. And like I said, usually six months later, I'll get a phone call from someone in that time frame. And they'll come back and say, hey, my kid saw it, my wife saw it, or I saw it. And we finally figured it out. But if you put together all the puzzle pieces and all the strange things going on this property, it's not too hard to figure out in my mind. I mean, I don't want to sound like the guys from finding Bigfoot, it's definitely a Sasquatch, but it's, you know, I mean, what else could it be? What else is going on here? Uh, It's, I mean, right. It doesn't, nothing else really makes sense. Exactly. That's, that's kind of, I mean, like I said, I mean, I'm, I don't know, but you, I mean, just what you said, nothing else really makes sense. I mean, if it was somebody going to steal something, they've had plenty of opportunity. They could have stolen a lot of stuff, but they haven't. You know? So, well, thank you again. What else could it be? Yeah, what else could it be? Well, thank you again for coming on. 
Well, you're welcome. I appreciate it, Wes. And that's it for tonight, everyone. Remember, if you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. Happy New Year to everyone. First show of 2017. Thank you again for being here. I will see you guys next time. Have a great night, everyone.